Hello, everyone. I am uh, Claudio Murgan, the host of the Speech on Inspire podcast, and uh, my guest today is uh, Dipal Shah. Dipal is a medical intuitive and mind programming uh, expert who offers a transformative experience for empaths to gain control of both their body and mind through powerful tools and techniques. With her knowledge of Eastern and Western medicine, you can awaken your spiritual mastery and achieve physical healing for your body, mind, and spirit. Dipal's quantum body awakening modality teaches you how to communicate with your body, remove blocks, and restore prana to the organs, glands, and systems for healing at the core. Dipal will guide you every step of the way to develop confidence, overcome fear, and live authentically. Her intuitive healing training equips you with the skills to heal yourself and others using your eight intuitive abilities. Dipal is an award-winning international best-selling author who has spoken at events that included Bob Doyle, Marcy Shimov, Ricky Beers, and Keith Leon. She has been featured in Authoritative Magazine, cover of Brains Magazine, Best Holistic Life Magazine, Sholeish Magazine, The List TV Show, ABC, NBC, CBC, and Fox. Dipal, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Oh, it is so wonderful to be here, and I'm really delighted. Uh, you are so successful. You've been on uh, so many, uh, you know, I mentioned networks and uh, TV uh, shows and magazines. But I know it's not an easy way to get to this point. People think it's easy, but it's a lot of, uh, you know, sweat and tears and, and trauma and drama behind our stories. I agree. So <laughs> in a previous life, you were a farmer representative. Looking back, how do you see now that aspect of yourself? Wow. You know, I feel like it was another lifetime. I feel like it was a dream. You know, when people ask me, would you go back to doing pharmaceuticals? I'm like, heck no. I have felt like through my dramas and traumas and stories, which we all have, you know, we start to ignite this part of us at a certain age. And it doesn't really matter what age, at any age, we tend to this spark tends to go off within us, where we start to ask ourselves, like, who are we? What are we? Why are we here? And like, what do these traumas mean? Why are we holding on to them, basically, right? And why do we hold on to certain stories? Why do we have certain personalities? And these were all questions that were going through my mind. Now, as a pharmaceutical rep, of course, I have more of an analytical mind than that creative mind. So I work very much from the left brain. And I never thought anything about energy healing. I never even knew it existed, even though I learned about energy in school. But they never taught us that we as humans are also energy and everything around us is energy. So for me, it was a whole new experience, a whole new uh, side of life that I was experimenting and opening up to when I left the pharmaceutical industry. And the reason I left was because I lost my purpose. You know, there's a reason we leave our jobs, you know, either we get fired or laid off or, or you know, we choose to leave. And for me, it was a choice that I, I was just tired. I was bored. I just lost my happiness. And when that happened, I was like, okay, I'm just going to be at home. I'll, I'll raise the kids. And I don't know what's going to happen after that. So I was completely open to whatever the universe was going to show me. And uh, when I opened up to that, it's quite interesting because I actually realized that I created a gap of just quietness in my life. And we don't often do that. And I enjoyed every moment of it. What I really enjoyed was learning to heal myself in natural ways. And so I sought out chiropractors, I sought out um, energy healers, I did all these things possible to heal my body because I was sick. Um, and what I mean by that is I was physically and mentally sick. And a lot of people don't want to admit to the mental illness. And that mental illness for me was anxiety, panic, uh, fight or flight, right? Um, 
It was also a loss of control. So I needed control over everything. I needed everything to go my way, right? Or it's no way. Yep. Um, there was a lot of anger issues. So these are the mental things I'm talking about. And then the physical was my entire digestive system. It was completely out of whack. And I remember times when doctors wanted to take out my gallbladder, they wanted to uh, do endoscopies and colonoscopies to see what's going on. Um, I've had surgeries, I mean, all kinds of things. And I was kind of tired of it, right? We get tired. And even though I came from a Western medicine, I'm like, there's something more out there. And that's when I turned to Eastern medicine and I started opening up to this new aspect of myself. That's exactly when it happened. And I'm so happy that it did because it really made me realize that there's so much that exists in Eastern medicine that we haven't even tapped into and that it's not all woo-woo, even though sometimes, you know, people will look at me and go, oh, you do all this woo-woo stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, that's your, uh, you know, your memory and your mind telling you these things, but it's actual reality when you really step into that realm. Um, because, you know, there is another aspect of human consciousness that we've never tapped into for healing. And it goes through and to into that quantum field. And that's what Einstein and all these other, you know, uh, Tesla, and, and they talk about this, about the quantum field. And that's what I enjoy tapping into now. And not one day that I work with my clients is the same, you know, and it's exciting and it's challenging and it's fun. And it's just so beautiful to see the healing that comes about just from the, the letting go and clearing the blocks that hold us back. Yes. And I'm glad that you uh, cut ties with, uh, with that industry. Uh, <laughs> it is said in a way that, you no, know, they have an established network of hospitals and professionals uh, but the problem is they are not taught what you just mentioned, not even a fraction of that. And self-healing is kind of a silver lining through pretty much all my interviews. People had to go through their own discovery of self-healing and not relying on, on the medical system, which doesn't heal the root, but addresses the cause. And Staying on the same uh, level of your previous life, do you think there is still a shred of ethics in that field, in the, the pharma, in the medical maybe, but in the pharma industry, do you think there is any shred of ethics left? You know what? I do feel like there is ethics left. Um, yeah. It's, you know, it's what we discern as the consumers, right? And it's interesting um, my daughter and I are watching TV one night and she goes, mom, it's interesting. Why is there all, why would you take a medicine that has all these side effects? Why would people do that? <laughs> you know, and it made me laugh. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know, but in terms of ethics, you know, there is ethics left. There definitely is in the pharmaceutical industry, but it's how the consumer discerns the information, right? What is right for your body? What is right for you? And that's exactly what I teach people. Learn to discern, have dis discernment, because that is the key to what you are going to provide for your body, right? Even the foods that we eat, we need to have discernment. Right. Yes. Not everything is going to work for this body. So when we speak about ethics, I feel like there's ethics in, in everything. It's just that how do we take it? Right. How do we discern and how do we make decisions for ourselves? Um, but yeah, in, in that terms, I do feel that the pharmaceutical industry, they are doing the best that they know how from their perspective. Um, but from our perspective in the energy healing world, uh, you know, we could talk about ethics there, right? Because <laughs> I've seen some things that are not ethical there either, but it's how we as consumers take on 
the information that we are given. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, well said. Thank you. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Now, going on another side of your uh, life, uh, if I'm correct, you're born in India. Yes. So what are your fond memories of that magical land? Oh, you know what? I I only um I only lived there for a year and a half of my life. So I don't have a lot of memories for the first one and a half year, but I visited India. And, you know, now that I'm in this beautiful space of spiritual growth and uh just learning and the knowledge of the Vedas. And I am so in tune with not only just India, but everywhere that I go, I want to visit the spiritual sites. I want to feel the synchronicities. I want to feel the spiritual energies, you know? Um, so like I said, I don't have a lot of mem memories. However, my mom as we were growing up, she's always kept our culture alive. And, and we've only celebrated like Diwali, uh, New Year's, which is all coming up at this time of year. Raksha Bandhan, which is the tie between a brother and sister, which just went. Um, and then uh, going to the temple and being um, in touch with our, with our, I guess you would call it Bible. Uh, but we have this um, story about Krishna, and then there's a story about Ram, which were the two ascended masters, right? They were the, the gods uh, that we look up to. And so the Ramayan and the Mahabharat are the two biblical parts of our teachings in Hinduism. And so my mom has always been there to shed some light upon us as we were growing up here in the United States. Because as a child growing up here, you know, I don't, um, I don't know a lot. I, I didn't know a lot about India. And I grew up in a Catholic school here. So there was a lot of like, where do I belong? You know, and, and I went to a Catholic school all my life from first to eighth grade. That's a long time of doing the 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 Hail Marys and the O Fathers and and all the you know all the prayers. <laughs> Every Wednesday I remember doing prayers and going to church. So there was definitely this combination for me of learning Catholicism and you know being a Hindu. So there was almost like this little battle going on, like, where do I belong, right? And, uh, but I, I, I think there was something inside of me, to be honest, that really said, you know what, we're all one. And I, I don't think I ever denied it. I was just open to learning, learning different religions, learning different aspects of, of who we are and what people embrace and the cultures and nationalities. I think it's beautiful. So for me, growing up, it has been very interesting. And, um, and you know, it's just about uh, just accepting everything in how it comes to us and acceptance of others. Yes, and you said it beautifully that uh, acceptance is important in our life as long as we don't, don't turn it into a dogma and we accept uh, others around us. That's That's perfect. We can all... Uh, live together and it happened in, in India and Pakistan before the, the separation. It happened in former Yugoslavia exactly. uh, and in other parts of, of the world. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to get into politics, but again, <laughs> people live together up to a moment when certain powers wanted them not to live in, in harmony anymore. So, exactly. uh, yes. and that's just ego <clears throat> playing, right? Like, if you really think about it, it's a lot of ego. And yeah, I feel like in a way, religion does separate people. And it's unfortunate, you know, but I really do hope and pray that humanity does come together and puts aside their differences and what they believe in, and really just come together as one and know that we're just all light, right? We're all just living, we're, we're just being an acceptance of each other. And uh, that's what we need to really learn to do. Yes. 
And after visiting India multiple times, do you have a preferred spiritual place? Oh, you know what? I went to Haradwar and that's where the Ganga River is, or as the Westerners call it, Ganges. <laughs> um, and it's located in the foothills of Himalayas in Uttarakhand. And you can dip into the Ganga and get purified of your sins. Um, you can bring the water home, you know, and uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to go. I've enjoyed that. I've wanted to go to uh, Varanasi and that's in Uttar Pradesh, which is upper um, upper part of India. And that's the city of Lord Shiva. Uh, there's another place that is like there's all these pilgrimages that I would love to do. Um, Puri, Odisha. Uh, it, it's in Odisha and it is a four, over there, it's four holy, uh, like sacred abodes associated with Lord Vishnu. And then there's another place which a lot of people may have heard of is Rishikesh. And we've been there. That's the birthplace of yoga. Um, there, I do want to go up to Mount Kailash and do the entire pilgrimage. And that's a very, very intense uh, pilgrimage that you really have to be ready for. But that is where uh, Lord, or I would say Shiva, the yogi, the very first yogi, is that's where his um, his energy resides. Okay. So I definitely, if you ever get a chance to go to Mount Kailash, that is the place to be. Uh, but that is, you know, I've been to a lot of places here that are just beautiful and spiritual. I've been to Ojai in California. Oh, that it's just such a sacred place. Sedona, Nashville, North Carolina, Italy to uh, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, I've been to Tulum, which is in Mexico, and many other places. So I just love visiting different places. Uh, but in India, I've only been to one. I have yet to go. It is such a long ride there <laughs> that uh, it takes about 24 hours to get there or more. And so I haven't visited back to my motherland that often. And I would love to go back there at some point and visit all these other places for sure. Yes, thank you for sharing. And I think I uh, lived in India in a previous life because I wrote uh, about uh, India in two of my books and about the mother uh, Ganga. And uh, I had the, I have an affinity because otherwise I wouldn't have put so much uh, research and uh, into my into my books about um, India. And um, you mentioned Puri. I know that um, the the master I follow, Yogananda. Uh, his uh, Param, Param, Param Guru was in Puri, yeah. Shri Yukteswarji. Um, so I would like to know if you follow any um, of the uh, Indian masters, uh, not necessarily deeply, but he had an affinity with, uh, with them. You know, here's what I'm going to tell you. I, I, I definitely do. Um, but here's how I started. I started with Dr. Wayne Dyer. And I'm sure you've heard of him. He is from here and he was the one who started me on my journey. And I, I've heard of Sadhguru, but I wasn't really connected or resonated with him. Uh, you know, I had friends that were and they would tell me about him and I'm like, yeah, yeah, OK. Um, but I was following at that time Wayne Dyer and Louise Hayes. And I was on this quest for my own healing and I listened to everything that they both had on YouTube. I read all their books. Even today, I follow their teachings. And one of the things that Wayne Dyer taught me was about our thoughts. And one of my favorite quote is, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And this has guided me in so many ways because I used to always look at things negatively. The first thought in my mind was always negative. And I know a lot of people have that happening, whether or not they choose to recognize that. We have so much negativity in our minds that until we start focusing on that and changing that, nothing will shift in our lives. 
And now it's completely opposite for me. But I had to train my mind to do that. And we have to find a way to clear and change the storm that's going on in our mind. So we have to find a guru. We should find a guru that can help us do that. And that at that time, it was Wayne Dyer. Now, Louise Hayes taught me about listening to the diseases of the body and what they had to say, because everything in our body has something to say. There is a subconscious energy of emotions that is embedded in the body. And it creates disease. There's a root of diseases. There's like there's a root to our diseases. And we have to bring it to the surface to heal. But are we bringing the disease to the surface? No, it's already there. We're bringing the root cause of it, which is a lot of times, 99% of the times, it's our emotions. And that's how I healed a lot of my health issues. And even today, I ask my body, what emotion are you holding on to when I have pain, when I have a discomfort, when I even have a headache? I'm like, what is it? What is what is making you feel this way? Right? We as humans hold 34,000 different emotions. That's a lot to keep a track of. That's why we don't sit there and just go, oh, what emotion am I feeling every few seconds? Because we feel emotions all day long. But the major ones and the ones that show up in our body, we should definitely ask. Don't neglect that. Okay. So to go deeper with my healing, I have to find gurus that resonate with me and my journey that I'm on. And at that time, in the beginning of my journey, my spiritual and healing journey, I was looking up to the teachings of Wayne Dyer and Louise Hayes. Right now, I am following Sadhguru and I was initiated by him. Um, And I love, I love his teachings. And yeah, maybe at one point it didn't click. But at this time in my life, he is my guru. He's such a modern guru, right? And his perspective of life and the way we see things and the way we perceive things as humans or what we're used to perceiving things is very different. He helps you understand why you think a certain way, why you do certain things. And so Sadhguru has definitely changed my life just with all the practical tools and knowledge that he has. And um, I, I just think that he's made such a big difference in my life that I hope that he can also make a difference in yours. Yes, I, I agree with you that uh, he's a modern guru. He takes bike tours and he uh, has yes! a live stream <laughs> from wherever he goes. And uh, he appeals to a certain uh, demographic uh, internationally, not only in India, because I know yeah. in India is a huge um, following and uh, a place with a big statue and, you know. Uh, and I do gonna... want to go there. <laughs> that is one of the places on my list, Coimbatore. Yeah which is where his uh, beautiful Shivalinga is. And I'm so, and there's also one in Tennessee, which is about four hours away from me, which I can't wait to visit. I told my husband when we retire, I said, why don't we go do some work there, some volunteer work, you know, and just be there for a few months. Uh, that That's something that I dream about for sure. Yes, and I also agree with the fact that uh, any disease or pretty much most of the disease in our bodies are triggered by uh, energy and emotion and uh, uh, bad feelings. And one way for me to, I mean, I train my mind and consciousness to to get rid of uh, negative uh, thoughts is I turn right away to thank you, God, love and light love and light. So right away, my whole perception changes and I get in you know, a different state of mind. Yeah. And you know what? The, the interesting thing is that our negative thoughts are programmed from childhood, right? And so that's why as an adult, it takes us so much longer to reverse the things we learned in childhood. It's all about rewiring and reprogramming the mind and the body. And that's what I teach people every single day is how to do this with ease and grace and you know, teach them the tools and techniques because I feel like everybody needs to learn 
to be more intuitive with their body, ask questions so that they could be better people, right? We all want to be better people, but we don't know how, yeah. right? We all want to heal. We don't know how. We want to have better careers, better relationships. But if we're constantly playing the same game through our subconscious, that's not going to happen, right? So that's why I invite everyone to come and learn. Check out my website at anandaforlife.com and come check it out because I would love to help you. There is a quiz that you can take right on there that shows you how intuitive you really are. And so come and take that. Thank you for the invitation. And let, let's go a little bit uh, deeper into your uh, teachings and how you can um, tell people to become more, uh, more intuitive, please. Yeah. So um, I do have a course that I teach people to become more intuitive. And, you know, the way that I became more intuitive is that I didn't even know that there was such thing as intuition, right? You always talk about gut feeling. You always say, oh, do you feel it? And did you know you were right? Or, oh, how did you know you were right? You know, you were right. How did you know that? right? People will tell you that because you go with your gut feeling, you hear things, you see things, you feel things. And for me, um, I started to, when I started to dive more into my spiritual journey, I took on, um, I, I took on courses that would help me become more intuitive because I was so intrigued by the psychic world. And I was like, Ooh, that sounds like fun. And I want to do something fun. And I want to be more in tune with my body. So I took uh, a Reiki class. Then I took a pranic healing class. Um, quantum, um, uh, there was a quantum touch class. There were all these classes and certifications that I've taken to help me get to where I am and open up my eight intuitive abilities, because there's actually eight of them. And people talk about the third eye. They talk about you know, opening up the third eye and all of that. But these are all just muscles that we are building in our body, right? We're just building these certain muscles to help us become more intuitive so that we can make better decisions for ourselves in our life. And so when I teach people, I take them through step-by-step -step processes and how to learn to tap into their body and actually become medical intuitives and energy healers so that they can help others on their journey as well. Interesting. And um, are you planning of developing other um, strategies to um, offer more uh, or develop more potential into your uh, students? Uh, yes. So we also have a business program. And so a lot of people, when I was taking Reiki and all these other classes, the one thing that was actually missing was the next step. For people who did want to create a business or wanted to get out into the world, because as empaths and many of you who are probably here listening to us and watching us are empathic and you feel things, you know things, you just don't know what to do with it. And so when I teach you my course and the step-by-step -step methods, then I also take you under my wing and help you develop a business. Right now we have five healers at Ananda for Life and you could work with any of them. Um, and so I help you create that because it takes a lot of work in creating a business, a lot of energy, a lot of background stuff that a lot of healers, you know, when I first started, it was, a, it was quite a bit of expenses as well as effort and time. And many people don't have that because they are doing a full-time job or a part-time job along with fulfilling their purpose and passion of helping others. And so I want to get you to do that. I want to help you do that. I want to see you succeed. I want you to, I want to see you step out there into the world like I did, because there's a lot of fear behind that. And so building that trust in yourself and the confidence and overcoming the fear of being out into the world, that's what I'll help you do. Yeah, it's, it's quite hard to uh, build a business without the uh, the right support. And it's it's beautiful that uh, you offer uh, such, um, 
such support for uh, for your um, students and you don't let uh, just go themselves in the world figuring out by themselves so that that's wonderful going back to to your family how are your kids perceiving what you are doing what do you tell them <laughs> you, you do i was waiting for that question <laughs> i always ask them i'm like what do you tell people what do you tell your friends when they say well what does your mom do for a living right and they were like i don't know i don't know what to tell them they're like she does some kind of healing and then they're like oh so she's a witch or <laughs> she does woo 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 or, you know, they just don't know what to say. And it's quite interesting because my kids grew up very intuitive. You know, my daughter used to say, my, my very first daughter, she's, I have two girls. And my first daughter said, mom, do you remember when I used to tell you that I saw monsters in my closet? And I was like, yeah, she was, she's like, remember you, um, you neglected that and you didn't do anything about it, right? And I'm like, yeah, because I didn't know anything about it. I said, if you ask me now, trust me, I would have done something. On the other hand, my second daughter grew up. She actually taught me to be more open to this type of energy because she was talking to trees. She would see souls in the trees. She would. She um, had many experiences with, with bad energies, ghosts and stuff. So I helped her through all of that. And I'm so happy that I was able to help her through that. However, she did have an experience where she and her friends were healing and helping their friend who had gotten hurt one day. And uh, what happened was a teacher had told her that you don't need to be doing what your mom does. And ever since then, she shut down all her gifts. Wow. And we all have these intuitive abilities. They've always been with us. We just don't know how to use them or we're too scared to use them because it's not normal, right? If you start doing healing or if you start getting the right answers to something, uh, you know, people are going to be like, what are you, psychic, right? They make certain comments and it makes you shut down this other part of you that's really incredible and powerful, and so a lot of empaths and intuitives will keep their mouth shut. And it's unfortunate. And they'll shut these abilities down. But you don't realize how much these abilities will help you in the long run in every area of your life. And we got to bring it back. And so with my girls, yeah, you know, they, they still don't have any idea what I do. But it's okay. My husband, on the other hand, he has accepted and to be honest, he's more of the Western world. He's a physician. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you're putting an energy healer and a physician together. And it's quite a battle sometimes. And, you know, he's always like, where's the research? And I'm always like, just believe. <laughs> so it becomes the battle of the, I don't know, the wisdoms. I don't know. It's quite funny. <laughs> it's good that I was quite nice when I mentioned the medical system. So thank you. <laughs> I hope you won't get mad at me. <laughs> and again, I said before, there are good doctors and there are doctors which are not awake. And exactly. they might not do what they are doing in purpose. But what I don't agree with is, is that they don't do any research and they take everything for granted. Whatever is put in there in front of them, they take it for granted and they don't do research. They don't look at both sides of the, the coin. This exactly. is what bothers me and a lot of people. Exactly. And I'm not <clears throat> saying that there's no room for conventional medicine. When it comes to Eastern medicine, I would rather try to heal myself naturally then, and then if I need to go to Western medicine, that's perfectly fine. A lot of my clients um will use both right because there's an energy aspect as well as the the um physical aspect and we have to take into consideration all that we have all the resources that we have available to us so i don't ever say no don't go see a doctor that is not how i work 
I will actually tell you when you come to me, has, have you been diagnosed by a doctor that you have this, right? So, and if I feel like you should go see a doctor, I will definitely say, hey, I really think you should go get this checked out. Because I feel like there is a place for everything in our lives. There's a place for naturopaths. There's a place for chiropractors. There's a place for um, acupuncturists. There's a place for everything. It just depends what you want to choose. And thank God we have all these options because it just depends what you want to choose for your healing, right? What's going to get you there? I've done Ayurveda for my healing because I had rosacea. I've done homeopathy for my rosacea. I've done many different modalities for my digestive system and just to get me healthier and well, right? But I also always tell my clients who come to me with problems with hypertension or thyroid issues or hormone imbalances, menopause, cancer. I mean, I get all kinds of clients, but I always ask them, what have you been diagnosed with? And let's work with clearing the stories under that right? Whatever symptoms you're having, let's heal that because it's all about healing the symptoms, right? We never go to see a doctor or never go to see somebody or get advice until something shows up in our body, right? If I'm feeling perfectly well, why would I need anybody's help? Yes. Right? So yeah. that's why we're here yeah. today. And some diseases have uh, are very aggressive, and the um, uh, Eastern medicine might take a long time to to heal. So you don't have time. So you or guess the you, other way around. Yeah. <laughs> so you go for whatever you think is best at that particular exactly. time, exactly. and then you address it with um, other type of uh, approaches. Yes. Exactly. Sure. I mean, I recently had two cancer patients. <laughs> And they both use conventional medicine as well as um, energy healing with me. And they found they found using both together was quicker than just using one or the other because they both have have had the same cancer in the past. And it was a reoccurrence. So with this, you know, we were helping them with the mind and the body. And with Western medicine, you're really just getting the body, right? You're putting your body through a lot. So I can understand where the mind um, and clearing and feeling stronger in your body can help you through energy medicine. Yes, the immune system has to be boosted up during these experiences in order exactly. to cope up with the, the chemo or whatever. Yeah, uh, and what can you take? do with energy medicine, once we clear blocks, these energetic blocks, there's a lot that your body does. It goes back into harmony. It starts to it starts to tell the the other cells in the body. It communicates and rewire your system and really say, "Hey, this is how we should be working." Because when we clear the stories, we clear the trauma, we clear uh past lifetimes, we clear the karma, we heal ourselves. And when we're healing ourselves, we're healing our mind and the body. And we're saying, okay, we're ready to heal. We're 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 accelerating the process, the healing process, which with one or other modality could take a while. Why not do more if you can, right? For your body. Yes, and as soon as we are done with this um, with the healing, then we can be in full. Uh, love presence and exude love and spread it around us and make others happy and joyful and, and loving as well. Exactly. And, and, you know, you hear it through healings that people have found that peace and bliss and they learn a lot through their healing, just like I have, right? I mean, all my anger and I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that, oh, I don't get angry. I'm saying I know how to manage it better. I know how to manage my mind better because that anger took over. I know how to let go of the control. I know how to be less pessimistic, right? Or not pessimistic at all because I don't like that anymore. It feels very low vibrational to me. So once you start to heal and you find this other part of you, you don't want to go back to the old. Exactly. 
Dipal, do you have a daily spiritual practice? Uh, you know, I have a daily practice where I do my meditation in the shower. I do meditation in the um, when I'm going on a walk because I'll go for a walk every morning outside in nature. And I will do my breathing techniques, the aluham viloham. It is alternate nostril breathing technique. And you guys can look it up. But it is a very, very, very healing and powerful technique to balance the right and left side of your body and allow you to really take in prana, which is life force energy, and bring that into your body, into your being, so that you can feel enlightened every day and energized. And what I mean by enlightened is, is it gives you energy. It gives you positivity. It gives you happiness. And one of the things that I have practiced all the time, every day in my life, is smiling. Smiling will get the serotonin moving through your body. It does not hurt to smile. So yes. always smile. Yes, As very good advice. Thank you. And recently I did, like less than a week ago, I went through a Soma Breathwork uh, session and it was very powerful. The most yes. powerful session I, I've been through in a long time. So uh, I love yes. breathwork. I <clears throat> love it. Yes, it's very, very important. Uh, we are approaching the end uh, of the interview. Any final thoughts? Um, you know, I just ask that if you're seeking freedom from your suffering and pain uh, that follows you, um, there's many ways to turning that around, right? I've turned mine around and I'm sure you have yours. And if you're, if you're really curious about your journey, then definitely number one, bring awareness to your thoughts, bring mindfulness into your life and change your reactions to things. Those are the three things that will really help you shift and find that freedom that you're looking for in life. Now, like I said, I help a lot of people come out from their chronic health issues, but I help them learn the tools and techniques to become more intuitive and more in tune with their body. And if you want to learn how to do that, please do connect with me at deepalshaw at anandaforlife.com. We do have an amazing um, free offer for you. If you would like, we are having a class coming up to immerse yourself in your intuition. It's a three-day class, October 25th, 26th, and 27th. It's two hours each day. And we're really going to dive into your intuition. And I'm going to show you how you can heal yourself. Nepal, thank you very much for all your uh, wisdom and uh, your sharing uh, your life and your e spiritual experiences with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, to my viewers, thank you for watching. Share it, like it. Uh, visit uh, spiritualinspired.ca for a list of all the previous uh, interviews. Uh, you can download a free copy of my book when you visit uh, my website. And until uh, next time, love and gratitude.